Yeah, I've uh, decided after 20 years of playing the playing in the Australian NBL um, that it's time for me to step aside and retire. Um, I think that uh, whilst I I have as much passion and love for the game as I did from day one, uh, there comes a time in, in every sportsman's career when they know that it's time to move on and uh, over the past four to six weeks uh, I've sat down with my wife and uh, really talked about me and, and, and what I am as a, as a player and uh, um, what I want to get out of my life from now and, and, and we jointly feel that, that now is the right time even though um, as a competitor I still feel that I can compete and, um, and play at the highest level. But uh, uh, it is a, a, a cliche, but every sportsman says they know when it's when it's time, and uh, and I feel very comfortable and very very proud of the career I have and the decision that I'm making um, or that I've made, and uh, um, and look forward to the challenges and uh, that that lay ahead for me. I, uh, I watched him from the bench when I was playing with the Magic, and I'm still watching him from the bench now. Um, but uh, obviously, it's uh, it's been a pleasure to be involved with, with Tony. It's been a pleasure having him here. Excuse me. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, yeah, obviously a, a, a legend of the game uh, in this part of the world, uh, an obvious future Hall of Famer. And um, it's, uh, it's been just great to be involved with the journey and I'm watching Bears growth. As Andrew alluded to, I saw him as a junior first coming into the league and uh, watching him grow and develop over the course of 20 years and adapt his game and, and mature as a player and find other ways to keep helping the team um, has, been, uh, has been impressive and obviously talks to his longevity and in typical Bear fashion, um, I'm glad that he's, he's uh, choosing to go out on his terms and, uh, and that's exactly the way it should be because uh, he deserves all the accolades and all the recognition. What are you looking to do? Um, I think that uh, the one thing that the break is about uh, his family. Uh, I think that that's one thing that is pretty uh, obvious about this club and, and the, the structure that it is. And there's only um, one other family that's, that I'm closer to than, uh, than these guys. So I'll, I'll, I'll more than likely be heading back to Australia to be um, be with my my family, uh, either in Melbourne or Perth. Um, my wife's from Perth and, and I'm from Melbourne. And we have a one-year-old son who is challenging, to say the least, and uh, it's his birthday today, ironically. Um, so uh, we will be more than likely to, to head back there, but uh, you know, like I alluded to, uh, this club is, is, is part of my family. I'll leave um, here with a heavy heart. They were pretty shocked, I think. Um, I'd always gone into this career, into this year saying I wanted to play for, for one more after this. And um, uh, look, I think that uh, if I played a different role this year, maybe next year um, I might have kept going. But it just it just felt like it, like it was right. So I think that they were they were probably shocked because they knew that I initially wanted to, to probably play for another year. So. Um, it was, um, I, I would, I would, yeah, you'd have to ask them, but I'd say that would be the answer. Tony, it wasn't so long ago you went out there and put 27 over on the Melbourne Tigers. Does that, a situation like that, when you can still go out there and, and, and dominate a game, does that give you any second thoughts? It, it makes me feel good about myself that I can still do it, but as I said to these guys, um, that's a, a once every three months, that once, whatever, Thing that happens these days, whereas in the past I used to be able to do that once every couple of weeks, and um, and that's part of, of who I am as a competitor, and that's the way I want to play every game and every week, and um, I can't do that anymore. And as Dre said, I think that I've I have changed my game a little bit uh, over the years to be able to uh, continue playing. I think if I tried and played that the same style that I did 15 years ago, there's no way I'd still be in the league, or if that's all I could do. Um, but it's slowly starting to go. <laughs> well, not slowly. It's starting to go, and um, and I, I as a um, proud person in, in what I can achieve on the basketball court, 
Um, I don't want to be that 38-year-old guy at the end of the bench. That's not a role um, that I should be filling, and uh, it should be given to someone. This is a, this is a massive challenge for me. This, uh, as soon as I finish, I'm, I'm playing for Waikato in the New Zealand NBL this year, and I'm really looking forward to that, just knowing that it's a sort of a final season and, and something that I can just go out there and enjoy and have fun. And, and um, so when, once that's all over, um, for me, this is a, a pretty daunting thing. This is the only job that I have ever known. Um, for, right from when I was 17, uh, I, even though my first contract, I think, was for $15,000 and you couldn't earn a living playing basketball, but I was young and my only ambition was to make the Australian team, so my parents supported me in that. Um, and then from there, I mean, I've never had to, to, to do a, a real job, as my wife calls it, and, um, and I'll have to do that. So this is a, a, a real uh, exciting and daunting challenge for me, and I don't know whether or not that involves basketball. I think I still have a love and a passion for the game. Sometimes I think, well, maybe I should step away for a little while. Um, that might reignite something. Um, you know, coaching, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend that to anyone, seeing what these guys go through, the, the time and effort. Uh, that they, they have to do, you know, that's something I have to sit back and um, go through a process of whether or not I'd be a good coach. I don't want to coach just because um, that might be a natural progression for a player that's been involved in the league for 20 years. Um, for me, this is like a, it's, I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be a, a very uh, interesting four or five month period leading up to when I do finish playing officially and, uh, and have to go out there. Just, just a matter of interest, what would you have done if you didn't go to basketball? You know. I'd always wanted to be an architect. That was my thing. Um, and ironically, I'm back at Unitech doing architectural technology. So it's only taken me 20 years to, to get around to doing it. But um, and that's an industry that I might go into. Um, I haven't finished it, so I, it's something that I'll just uh, plant some seeds and see what happens. Uh, you know, I love basketball. I'll stay involved. I mean first present I bought my son for his birthday today is a basketball ring. Hopefully he continues to play. Um, and uh, I'll say, well, this has been the best club that I've played for in the last 20 years. Uh, I'm probably the, that's the hardest thing for me is that I didn't, you know, this situation wasn't around 15 years ago when I was probably uh, in my prime. Um, and uh, I didn't have an opportunity to come over here earlier because uh, we love it here. My wife often says, you know, the hardest thing, uh, it's going to be tough tough leaving here because we really enjoy um, our friends and, and, and the family that we have in, in the breakers here and um, uh, so I, I consider myself a part honorary New Zealander. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether they're giving it to me yet, Vouch is still, you know, it's still out there but um, I, I, I've really enjoyed it here and, and love uh, the experience and, and I'll be back, I'll just be sitting on the sideline having a beer instead of <laughs> out there running up and down.